In F1 23 there are 110 levels of AI difficulty. And in this video I'm going to try and beat all of them from 0% AI who are absolutely dreadful. To 110% AI which are the hardest difficulty in the game and I'm going to be doing it on a controller. The rules are simple, if I win I increase the difficulty by 10%, if I lose well I guess you'll find out. So for 0% AI you'll be surprised to hear that it wasn't that difficult. I've got no idea what Max Verstappen is doing back here in 10th place as by this point he's usually on lap 3. Anyway we managed to get past him and 9 other cars on the way up to turn 1 and thankfully I didn't have damage. Going into the braking zone I had to be careful but I also made another overtake on Lewis Hamilton which put me up to 5th place. We'll quickly go through my next overtakes but as you can see I then got past Oscar Piastri and Sergio Perez. And then coming into the second chicane I broke pretty late and made the final two overtakes which I needed to complete the first part of this challenge. So yeah, that was a pretty good start. I easily beat 0% AI by 26 seconds, however it could have been a lot more if I didn't end up spinning whilst I was boarding cockpit cam. So of course, next up was 10% AI, and I was actually starting at the back this race, so I wanted to try and overtake every car before the end of lap 1. To be honest, I didn't have that good of a start, but as you can probably imagine, against this low of a difficulty, it does not matter. I managed to make up 7 places before the braking zone into turn 1, and once again Max Verstappen is in 10th place. Clearly he's trying the 2023 Sergio Perez simulator. So on the exit I managed to get past Max and by Parabolica I was behind Charles Leclerc in second and Lance Stroll who was somehow leading. Sadly for him that wouldn't be for long as I managed to get past him and Charles just before the end of the first lap and that was this difficulty beaten. And after this I easily won all of the races from 30 to 70% AI. However the gap was reducing most races and I now know that this challenge was definitely not going to be as easy as I once thought. You see I've also done this video a few months ago around Austria and I was a lot worse at the game so I thought this would be an easy challenge to complete. Well, as you're about to see, I was so wrong. So next up was 80% AI, and for me this was the first proper difficulty that I'll be up against in this challenge, but luckily I started this race in second and I knew that this would make my life a lot easier. To be honest, I actually had a dreadful start, but I picked up a nice slipstream from Oscar Piastri on the run up to turn 1 which put me right on the back of him. And then going into turn 1 I made a pretty easy overtake around the outside of Oscar, I've got no idea why he was defending fresh air there, and I thought that this would be the end of my race against this difficulty. Well I'd be pretty wrong about this, for the first time in this challenge I actually had some competition. Honestly, looking back I think my brain had just slipped into thinking I was up against 0% AI again as I turned on my battery about 10 seconds too late and coming into Ascari I was side by side with Carlos Sainz. Thankfully I managed to stay ahead of Carlos but now the chase was on for Oscar Piastri in first place. So I managed to catch up to Oscar by the main straight and to be honest it wasn't that difficult. However I was starting to get a little bit worried about whether or not I'd be able to beat the upper difficulties. And there we go, in the end I managed to beat 80% AI by about 4 seconds which was a nice margin but things were about to get a lot harder. We are now on to 90% AI and unfortunately I started 7th in this race which definitely wasn't ideal. I feel like there's been quite a lot of Max Verstappen slander in this video but he had an absolutely dreadful start and I made my way past him, Oscar Piastri and Carlos Sainz all before turn 1 which was exactly what I needed so I could fight the front three. Leaving turn two I had a little bit of competition from Carlos Sainz but I managed to get a better exit than him and I settled into fourth place. And by the end of the lap I'd caught up to Alonso and Hamilton in third and fourth place because they were fighting through Parabolica. And I absolutely burned through my battery to try and catch up to them which worked perfectly. So I tactically used the tow to get past the both of them and now I had to chase down Charles Leclerc to get within one second of him before DRS was activated. I then made a very simple overtake on Charles Leclerc using the DRS which I now knew that I would definitely be relying on against the upper difficulties. And that was the end of the race against 90% AI. By the way, this is around the difficulty that I usually race at and I knew for day 2 that against 100 and 110% AI I would be on a big upwards battle. So for day 2 I knew that I would need every little bit of help that I could get so you best believe I turned off equal cars and I would be driving as Max Verstappen. Annoyingly I started 5th in the race against 100% AI but to be fair I was in the fastest car. To start the race I had a little bit of wheel spin that definitely slowed my progress down. However luckily for me on the run up to turn 1 every single car seemed to part like the Red Sea off to the right hand side and I knew that I could make up so many places. And that's exactly what I did. Into turn 1 I gained 3 positions and although I probably should have got damage for that little bit of contact with Charles Leclerc I couldn't ask for a much better start. We'll quickly go through the rest of lap 1 but as you can see through most of the corner Charles was gaining time. However with the help of Slipstream and driving a literal rocket ship by the end of this part of the race I was right on the back of Charles coming into turn 1. I don't know why he was wobbling around going into turn 1 but I went around the outside of him and although we made a little bit of contact he still managed to get a better exit compared 
it to me. We are now coming up to Curva Grande and I was desperate to hang it around the outside of Charles because I knew that I would then have the inside line for the second chicane. I probably should have used a little bit of battery to get ahead of Charles here but I was thinking about later in the race when I knew that I would have to defend. So coming into turn 3 and 4 we both broke at the same time but for once I was right about being careful with my battery because the inside line had still paid off and I was now in the lead of the race. And for two laps I had no challenge whatsoever. Leclerc had been fighting with drivers behind and Piastri had made loads of progress but coming into a sky I switched off for a second and I had an absolute disaster class of couple of corners. I managed to lose well over a second from being an idiot and I also conceded first place to Sergio Perez. Luckily I'd been saving up my battery just in case I needed it and I definitely did now. Before Parabolica I tactically stayed behind Checo for DRS and then I dumped about 20% of my battery just to make sure I made the move. Luckily this did work and although I had to leave him just a little bit of space going into turn 1 I managed to stay in first place for the final lap but I knew the race definitely wasn't over just yet. So for most of the lap I was absolutely fine. I saved up a lot of my battery so I could use it on the final few straights but even though I held off Checo through every corner, coming up to Ascari he was right on the back of me because of DRS. Luckily I held him off through Ascari but he had a slightly better exit than me and sadly he had his back tyre side by side with me going into the final corner. Going through the final corner I thought I'd done enough to hold Checo off but I had a slight wobble that just about allowed him to be side by side with me coming up to the finish line and this was about to be so close. So I turned on my battery and he clearly had none left as in the end I managed to beat him by only two thousandths of a second and I now knew that the race against 110% AI was going to be a massive struggle. And this was the big one. Starting in second, I couldn't ask for much more, but as the lights go out, my reaction time was 20 milliseconds slower than Oscar Piastri's. Yes, I did go back and time it. However, he seemed to get bogged down accelerating, whereas my traction was absolutely perfect. And coming up to turn one, we were now side by side, but I knew that I had to get into the lead, otherwise he'd end up getting away. Oscar broke later into turn one than me, but because I could take the inside line into the corner and then could get the power down on the exit of the corner earlier, I managed to get into the lead of the race, which was exactly what I needed. Sadly, Oscar fell back a few positions through the rest this first lap which was a shame because I would much rather be up against him compared to who was about to be side by side with me. And coming into Parabolica Sergio Perez managed to get ahead of me after I ran slightly wide. But for this race I was using lower wings because I knew that I would have to make most of my overtakes on the straights. So I dumped most of my battery getting next to him but then he slightly pulled away so I gave him a little bit of a naughty tap that I knew would slow him down. Yes, I'm aware that's not legal. Anyway, I tried to push him as wide as physically possible into turn one to tighten the angle into the corner and then I broke later than him. All of these dodgy tactics ended up working and I stayed in the lead of the race, which was so crucial. And now we're halfway through lap three. You're going to have to believe me when I say I genuinely didn't see Checo here as he was going around the outside of me because let's be honest, I was never stopping him with all the straight line speed that he had. Anyway, going into and through Ascari, he managed to get past me, which let's be honest was probably fair considering what had just happened. And now I knew that I needed to replicate exactly what I did on lap two. Luckily for me though, this time I had DRS. I tried to make Checo take a worse line through Parabolica so he wouldn't get as good of an exit and looking back this time it didn't make a difference. So as I made the overtake long before the braking zone and I was back into the lead of the race with less than two laps to go. So we'll quickly skip through sector one as nothing happened except Checo trying to overtake me through Curva Grande but I managed to out drag him but that would not be the end of our battle. Once again on the way up to Ascari Checo was on the back of me but at least I knew that he would be this time. So I didn't do much to defend against him as I knew that it wouldn't be worth it but I did try and make him defend against me and use the inside line so I could go side by side side with him into a sky. And that's exactly what happened, but sadly I had to back out going through the final part of that section of corners because we definitely would have crashed. At this point you probably got deja vu from the last lap, but don't worry I was the same and something excellent was about to happen. Firstly, I made the overtake on Checo, which was of course number one priority. But the next best thing happened straight away after this, and it was that Charles Leclerc had now overtaken Sergio Perez into turn one. This meant there wouldn't be a rocket ship versus rocket ship fight into the final few corners. So to be completely honest, not much happened for the rest of the lap apart from a small battle with Charles going through Curva Grande, and I thought I could relax, however I'd be so wrong. Coming up to a sky, I thought I'd be fine because Checo and Charles were fighting. However, on the exit of the corner, Charles Leclerc seemed to have an absolutely storming exit, and coming into what could potentially be the final corner of this entire challenge I was stressed. Charles was 33 milliseconds behind me coming into Parabolica and he broke so much later than me. I also turned in later than him which meant that we made contact but it was only minor. This meant that now I would be up against Sergio Perez on the run up to the line but in the end I had enough battery to hold him off and I had successfully completed this challenge. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope you don't have to wake up too early for the Australian Grand Prix.